So hello everyone. So today I'm going to share with you how I use common home products to uh, bring these Johnston and Murphy Shell Cordovan loafers uh, back to life. Come on in and join me. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to need, I, of course, you know, you need a pair of shoes, a pair of uh, loafers. Uh, these are 19, nine, late 1980s, uh, early 19. Uh, 1990s uh, shell cordovan as you can see there I don't know if you can see it but you can see you can see a little little signs of you know it says shell cordovan on it uh, they're made by Johnson and Murphy um, full strap loafers um, they used to be called they're called penny loafers uh, but because folks used to put a penny in here uh, for style when they first came out they were just loafers and then um, the uh, folks would uh, put a dime in here uh, they store a dime in here so they can make phone calls, and then after a while they take the dime, uh, the dimes out, uh, and put pennies in there because it does go with the. Uh, it's more stylish with the, with the, uh, the shoe, so uh, it became known as the penny loafers. Um, so Johnson and Murphy's, uh, these these are Crown, uh, Aristocrat, uh, Double Oak Sole. Uh, extremely, extremely well made. Uh, their quality has slipped quite a bit now. Now it's just cement, cemented in versus the uh, the uh, Goodyear welting all the way around. Uh, these shoes has been uh, the 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 top, the bottom. I'm sorry, the bottom uh, uh, portion, the bottom half of the double oak sole has been replaced, as you can see. Uh, there's a line right there, and the stitching doesn't really match up with the old stitching uh, replacement heel also. Uh, but for a 35-year-old uh, shoe, the Cordovan has, has held up tremendously. Um, so that's that. Um, most likely it's going to need another heel here soon, but I think I got another, I want to say, six months, nine months, heck, even a year, depending on how often I wear these. All right, so you're gonna, you need a pair of shoes, of course, and what I do with all my shoes after wear is I use a disinfectant. Use a disinfectant, um, you know, after I wear it. Use a disinfectant, like the bowling alley. It doesn't take long to dry, like a minute or two, or less than that. Um, also use a Wooden shoe tree, any shoe tree will do. Um, I have no preference uh, in what kind of shoe tree I use, but you do need a shoe tree uh, in your shoe uh, after each wear. I don't wear my shoe every day. The key with making shoe last is your socks. Uh, you do need a, uh, some great, some good socks. These are great socks. Um, they are wool, Murano wool. It, it keeps it's, it has an antibacterial property which keep your shoes uh, from stinking up and uh, it keeps the insole extremely extremely well kept all right so that's just a, a hint there um, you're gonna need a bottle of water uh, old t-shirt application brush this is an extremely old horsehair brush uh, that I use as an applicator and then I'll brush it off and then I finally do some fine polishing with this. Um, I do not use, I try not to use a lot of other chemicals, uh, the French product, the U.S. made product, all those lotions and stuff. I just use a skin lotion. Uh, if it's good enough to go on my skin, good enough to go on my face, it's good enough to go on a pair of Shell Cordovan. Um, now this has jojoba oil in it, etc. Yeah, there it is right there. I have no idea what that is, but... Uh, like I said, it's good enough on my face. It's good enough for a pair of shoes, right? And then I use a Castile soap. This is the soap that I made myself. Um, I was walking through uh, one of the big box store, uh, department store, and they had um, some cottonseed oil, uh, the stuff that you use to fry turkey with. Had a big box of it, and it was on clearance, so I bought, I think I paid seven bucks for it, and it was a huge, huge, uh, I think it was five gallon, no, not five gallons, probably a gallon or something like that. Two gallons, two gallons, there you go. So I use it to make a big batch of soap. I use some uh, sodium hydroxide fats, sodium hydroxide water, and then fats. Um, and then I let it cure, and I got myself a bar of soap. I made a big batch of it, so um, 
it does last me quite a while. But I'll use that to clean because the Castile soap, the soap will pull oil and uh, surface oil and grit off of the uh, off of the cordovan. And then after that, I'll use a skin cream and of course I use the water. So with that, let's get started. Uh, sorry, I'm keeping you. Right, you can see this is pretty pretty dirty right now. All right, let's see what I can do. All right, so I'll spray the soap, wet it down a little bit, wet down the shoe. That was quite a bit. All right, so I'll use an applicator brush. Went everywhere. All right, you can see there. This on. It's like a saddle soap with less oil. And you really want a soap, guys. You don't want to use a detergent. Let's keep that in mind. Some folks use, uh, you know, you can use detergents on like work boots and, you know, stuff you run around in warehouses or oil fields. Uh, but for these, I just use regular soap. Detergent is really made to break down the oil, and that's the last thing you need on on your Cordovan shoes because it'll strip all your natural oil off of your shoes and you don't want that. As you're going to see how much stuff will come off just with this homemade soap. Now keep in mind this is a lye soap. So it does burn. I use this you know on my hair. I use it on the, in, my, in the showers. I use it. So if it's good enough to go on my skin, it's good enough on a, <laughs> like I said, it's good enough to go on a pair of shoes. All right. So I'm not going to show you the other pair. Uh, I put it on hold. I'm going to show you how I wipe this stuff off. So with that, I wipe this off. You're gonna see how, see all the stuff's coming off of it. It's not super, it just needs to be re-oiled, re-lotion, I should say. Um, I don't use a leather conditioner on this particular pair. All right, so I'm gonna spray it down again with water like a rinse and then let it dry it looks better now and the only reason it's looking better is because it's still a little damp it needs oil once it dry up it's gonna dulled up and then but it needs oil and then afterwards I'll put a I put a penny back in there, or two pennies, one in each shoe. All right, guys, so this is what you're seeing right here. All right, so that's clean. That's with the soap, like a saddle soap, but, you know, I use Castile soap. And then it's going to dry for about 15 minutes, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so... Uh, I'm back. Um, shoe, both shoes have uh, dried a little bit, and I've put uh, a uh, coat of cream on this already uh, to save time. And then now I'm gonna put a coat of cream on this shoe. Um, let it dry for roughly half an hour. Buff it out with a clean um, horsehair brush, and then I may uh, put a coat of. Um, homemade wax on it. So this is avocado, uh, avocado oil, uh, coconut oil, um, beeswax, and paraffin wax. Uh, it's kind of a hard wax. Uh, I put this on uh, my Shel Corovan shoes and boots once a year, uh, a thin coat uh, as a protectant. Uh, I don't use it too often because they might, uh, I'm thinking they may pull the color out of the Corovan, the natural color out of Corovan. Um, so with that, show you. Oops, 
anyways very light layer of uh, of cream doesn't need very much um, as long as you keep it hydrated and uh, and oiled you don't need to do it that often and it doesn't really absorb a lot of the uh, a lot of the oil a lot of the cream of course you guys know there's oil in the cream All right. And you can hear the squeaking. Uh, these are just, like I said in previous Cordovan videos, these the Cordovans are like pretty much bulletproof. They last for years and years. You will go, you will go through three or four pairs of finely made Horwin calf skin before you go through a pair of. Uh, Show Cordovan if you take care of it. Don't let it cr dry out and crack and break on you. But uh, they do last. And you probably can pass it down to your kids. That's how long these, how durable these uh, shoes are. Though you do pay double the price. Ah, dang it. You do, pay, you do pay double the price on Cordovan shoes. I guess not really a leather pay double the price in cordovan let's call it a leather it's a membrane but than any other material that you can find on your shoe of course there's always exception all right so it's there i'm gonna take a brush an older brush I do this because my finger couldn't get into some of the crevices. So you can see, get in as much as I can. How dull that is. And as it dries in about 15 minutes or less, 10 minutes, Heck, maybe even five. It's dry now. So what I'll do is I'll buff this out with a clean brush. I'll hit it for about 15 minutes on each shoe to uh, try to bring out the natural luster as much as I can. Uh, and Cordovan does look a lot better when you continue to brush it. All right. So with that, I'll continue to brush it, come back. Uh, as you can see, I only took a dab of this. Uh, and then put a, uh, a thin coat of uh, homemade wax uh, on the shoe. Throw in a couple of pennies, and then we'll be done. All right, see you All in right, a bit. So after the cream dried, uh, I brushed it out with a brush uh, now is the homemade uh, wax now keep in mind this is I'm using a black an old black sock so you guys can see the wax that's that's on it now this is not a high it's not intended to be a um, a mirror like finished um, it's going to give it a, a nice coating of protection and a um, somewhat shiny uh, finish uh, but I'm more interested in the, the coat of protection this is the same I mean I can use this stuff as uh, a lip balm uh, or even a hand cream uh, as you can see um, it's more of a weather protection all right so I'm gonna use this on a shoe I'll put it on and it'll be a dull Again, this is homemade uh, it'll be a dull finish and then once I can't buff it out right away. Um, I can use that as a spit shine, but uh, I'm more interested in protection. Um, now the Johnson Murphy shoes—they're uh, they're higher end now. Uh, 
They run about $300 for a pair of shoes. Um, but most of their stuff are a little less expensive. I prefer the older shoes. As you can see, it's hand stitched. Hand stitching here. Uh, and uh, some machine stitch. And the older shoes, or the more expensive, Johnston and Murphy are serviceable. I've gone through a lot of uh, newer Johnston and Murphy, and I attempted to uh, surface the heel and then the then the sole fall apart. You can't get them wet. On and on and on. So. It's just worth spending a few extra dollars or maybe a hundred or two extra and the shoes will last you thirty to forty years or even fifty years and like I said these are thirty five years old and most likely they'll last another thirty years All right, so you really don't need to see me put on the wax. But you don't need much. It's just a thin coat, and it'll last about six months. Like I said, you guys can, uh, it's no different than polishing a, any other pair of shoes, but this thing will give it a nice shine. It's a, uh, and of course it's going to be a matted, not a matted finish, but uh, I don't know, semi, not even a semi glass, a satin finish. Maybe that's more of a better term uh, on these shoes, and it'll look good at, with a pair of chino. It looks good with a uh, pair of jeans. I don't know why I emphasize that, but uh, I don't know why I emphasize that. But I think earlier in the video I said the aristocrat, their 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 crown aristocrat shoes. I have no idea where my mind is, but you know, after I polish it out, you're gonna see. I'm gonna put a couple of pennies in uh, right here. In that pocket now these are 19 uh, okay so what it is is the right the right term is pre-1982 uh, pennies so these are 1980s um, I don't have any Indian head pennies but Indian head would look really cool in here but I don't have any but these are 1980 pennies um, you want pre-82 pennies because they are uh, copper versus the newer pennies after 82 it's half mid-year 82 uh, the mint converted over to other material and the penny corroded a lot easier so I recommend if you're gonna put pennies or dimes um, I recommend you use um, pre-1982 so it'll be 81 or older and if you can find a couple of uh, Indian head pennies I think that's first class all right I'm going to show you the, uh, an image of um, or short footage of the, what the finished product looked like so you don't need to see me buff it out but uh, most, once this dry once this once it's dried then I'm just going to buff it out with a clean um, brush um, and then uh, again thin coat um, and then that'll be it okay guys so here's the finished product a satin finish and a pair of 
Johnston and Murphy, Crown Aristocraft. Should be good for another six months. Um, after each wear, I'll recap it. After each wear, I'll spray it and sterilize it. And uh, with, with a uh, similar to a uh, disinfect, a light so disinfectant spray. Um, and then a quick, probably five, three to five minutes brushing. And these things will be good to go for another six months or even a year. Oh, here, let me let me see, get a better some better lighting on it. With that, do me a favor and uh, subscribe, like, and share. I appreciate it. You see the pennies right there. All right, I'm out of here.